Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Bevel versus Garmin. This is something that I've looked for across YouTube and I haven't found it yet, so I figured I would just make the video. I am a Garmin and Apple Watch user, and when I am using the Apple Watch, I tend to like to use Bevel because it gives me a lot of those advanced Garmin-like features. And when I'm using Garmin, I don't really use much else of anything because Garmin Connect is already pretty robust. So I wanted to compare the two so you get an idea about how much data Bevel actually gives you and if it's actually comparable to Garmin. And I know this is going to kind of get in the weeds and cross a lot of barriers because Garmin is more fitness oriented and Bevel is more health oriented with some fitness things because it does cater towards an Apple Watch audience. But let's go ahead and dive in and we'll talk about those nuances when they come up. Hey, thanks for subscribing to the channel and watching the video. This video is actually sponsored by me. I just launched my brand new storefront, my website, and on it, I have a bunch of different wallpaper packs from some of my photography that I've done over the years. I update it regularly, so be sure to go check that out. Every purchase you make helps to support the channel directly, and so I appreciate you for watching. Thank you. Starting with Garmin Connect, I have my Instinct 3 Solar Tactical 50 millimeter edition connected up here. And I've been using Garmin for a while now, and I just threw it on today. I haven't been wearing it lately, but this is the general dashboard that you're going to see. I'll go back to a day that I actually wore it so you get more in-depth look at some of the data. So here's a day where if I look at my body battery, Garmin does a great job at showing you, you know, this line is your body battery and it drops throughout the day. And the more stressed you are, the more it's going to drop. And then when you have periods of rest or a nap, this does have nap detection, um, your body battery will go back up. And so it's not a hard and fast thing, like definitely listen to your body before you listen to this. But it does give you a great idea as to like, okay, how much energy do you have in the tank? And it is pretty accurate. It will not get below five. Um, I have figured that out just with our, our daughter being born. I ended up pulling an all-nighter when she was born and she was born at like 6 a.m. and I had my Garmin on the whole time. And so I ended up going like a full 24 something hours without sleep. And just, I've never been so tired in my life and the body battery never dropped below five. And so I, I, it won't go beyond that. And I've heard that sentiment from some other people as well that it just won't get low like that. But it does give you a good idea as to like, okay, how, how are you doing? And you can pull certain elements out if you want to see it without those things. Um, and that sort of a thing. And so I do like that a lot on Garmin. The body battery feature is pretty unmatched in that regard. And then they also really give you some helpful things at a glance. I did not sleep with the watch on last night. And like I said, I haven't been wearing it. I've been wearing more of the Apple watch lately to try to gather data in that way. And so I'll show you that in a little bit, but it does give you just really good training first metrics as opposed to more health first metrics. So everything is centered around the perspective of like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? How is your stress? And how ready are you to take on some exercise? What is your training readiness looking like? What's your VO2 max trending at? Just that kind of stuff, right? And so if you look at your training readiness, um, it doesn't have real great data because I haven't, like I say, been wearing it. But if I go back to the last few days that I was wearing it, it pulls in all these different factors from your sleep, your recovery time, your different stress levels. It will pull all of that in so that it gives you an accurate representation of like, okay, how fatigued and tired are you? And, you know, are you ready to go for a run or for a hike? Again, listen to your body first, but this is generally a helpful metric where it just gives you that extra bit of like, you're wondering, you know, I don't feel super great. Should I go for a run? This will help you to hopefully make that decision. And I find the VO2 max metric to be fairly accurate. There's been a lot of other videos done about it. I know the quantified scientist has excellent videos about just the tech and some of these watches. Nothing beats the Apple watch when it comes to sensors and heart rate and technology and stuff like that. But Garmin is not bad. It's not a slouch. It's better than nothing, right? And so VO2 max is a great estimation. It's fun to just see that change over time as you exercise and it goes up and down and all the fun things. And that's kind of it. They try to add some social elements in like with different challenges and steps and you get your different badges, similar to how Apple fitness will do it. Just not as well polished, I would say, you know, inside of here, you can jump in on different challenges and whatnot. You can have friends and leaderboards and then you can see your calendar. It's a bit more messy compared to something like an Apple watch with the rings. And so you really have to understand and know what the different colors are 
Again, this is kind of built with a data first perspective, design later. And so if you're just an athlete or you're a runner and you need to see all those things, then that's fine. You know, that's all people care about. The news feed is going to show you like friends activities and stuff like that. I won't show it because I don't want to dox anybody. And then over here, you can just see all your lifetime health stats, right? And so you can see how your sleep has been just, okay, they've added some features to the app. So there's sleep coaching to help you if you need more or less sleep or if you're, you have naps. So that is helpful. You know, you can see your whole year in review over sleep of, you know, how well or how poorly you sleep over time. I mean, you can just pick a thing, right? Blood pressure is not going to be on there because I don't have that reading off my watch. I don't have a device to do that. But, you know, stress, you can see how your stress has been over the last year. If there's stressful times or seasons to help you understand that and learn that. I'll do a video more deep diving into the importance of that later on. I think it's super important. But that's really cool to be able to just see everything. You know, you see your fitness age. Apparently, my fitness age is 22. That's pretty good because I'm currently 28 at the time of filming this. And so I will take that. If that's accurate, I will take it. And one thing that Garmin just added in is this lifestyle logging. And so you can add factors in uh, like that they program in or you can do custom ones. Like if you've gone to the chiropractor, if you got your sunlight for the morning, did you have early caffeine, late caffeine and different just log those different behaviors. And it will impact then and show you trends of like, hey, when you wake up early, you have more energy. Or hey, when you have coffee at 6 p.m., you tend to sleep terribly. And so just things like that to help you understand that. But again, it's data first, design second. And so I wish Garmin would create widgets or just create a better overall experience to be able to input this. Because to have to go into the app and go four or five menus deep to be able to input that every day is just really inconvenient. And so I don't use that stuff. But it is helpful, like I say, just to see data and to see different insights. I mean, it does give you different graphs and statistics so you can compare your numbers against other users on the Garmin platform and things like that. And so it is generally helpful. You can break things down by activity. You know, again, data first, right? And so that is the Garmin Connect app. That's kind of the baseline, the standard. It's super good if you're an athlete. It's super good if you're wanting to enhance your, your numbers and your running and stuff like that. But what about if you just want more health monitoring metrics out of it. It's not going to give you the same amount of health monitoring metrics as easily or as pretty as something like the Apple Watch would. And that's where Bevel comes into play. And this is not a sponsored video. I have not been sponsored by Bevel. I just really like the app. I found it and I found it to be a really, really good comparison when I was using the Apple Watch to get as close as I can to a lot of the certain Garmin metrics that I cared about, like stress levels and body battery. And so it does cost $50 for the year, but honestly, I think that's worth it for what you get out of it. And so Bevel is really no slouch. I'm pulling this data from yesterday because I had something funky happen with my sleep data last night and I lost it for some reason. Trying to use multiple watches like Garmin and Apple Watch and trying to get all your data to collect into the same place is kind of a pain in the butt. I may do a video on that in the future if there's interest in it. But Bevel gives you a really nice dashboard here to show you, again, kind of that fitness first, but closely followed with health features of like, here's your strain, your recovery, your sleep, and it pulls it all together just like Garmin, but it does it in a way that's so much prettier and it actually utilizes AI. And so this is from yesterday. And so if I click on the AI summary, it's going to give me kind of just like, here's a blurb about your day. And I've even seen it pull in weather so like even this morning, for example, it's kind of a cloudy day here where I live. It said like, you're doing great today. Your energy is blah, 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 blah. Your battery battery is looking good considering it's a cloudy day that helps with your mood. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool that it can pull weather information in. And so what you can do is like, this is like AI pulled in from your health data. And so you can chat with it and be like, like, should I go for a run today given my last few days? And it'll pull that information up and it'll give you a response based on your health data. So yeah, it's saying you've had pretty low strain the last few days, your body seems ready, your cardio, blah, 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 go for it. And I mean, you can even put in like, hey, I feel I have like this weird like pull in my leg, should I take it easier? Should I change it up? Like, it's really, really cool. And you can take photos of different plans or like meal prepping stuff. And so having that AI built in that interfaces directly with your data is actually awesome. And then you can change your activity status, which is going to help with that information, like telling the app if you're sick or if you're injured, if you're just taking a break because you're on a trip or if you're actively trying to be active. And so right off the bat, it gives you just helpful information. And then you can jump into like the stress level. Like I said, I love seeing this. I think Garmin does it better, but this is 
prettier, if that makes sense. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't equate to everything, but seeing your stress along with your body battery and your periods of rest, like what Garmin does is more helpful. But this is also helpful too, to see, like I had my watch off for most of the day yesterday, but it does show you like what moments are going to be super stressful or not. And so you can compare those and see how they're trending and see how it breaks it down for you. And so that is super helpful to have that information. And then right below the stress is the body battery. Again, this kind of takes it. This is going to show you that stress along with the body battery. So stressful moments will drain it further. And then it still gives you an AI summary basically on every page. And so you can really deep dive into your health. And then you can see the primary benefit of your body battery is your sleep the night before. And so if that's kind of more like training status up here, we get down into more of the health monitoring stuff. And this is what I love about Bevel. And I'm so glad that they finally added full Garmin support for it. I mean, technically you could always run your Garmin metrics into your Apple Health and Apple Health to Bevel. But now this interface is directly with the Garmin account. And I think that's great. But this is going to give you those vital type features that you would previously get on the Apple Watch to show you if there's any outliers or what your body is doing. The only thing I don't have is my temperature because the Garmin doesn't have a temperature sensor in it. At least this one doesn't, the Instinct 3. The Apple Watch does. And so when I wear the Apple Watch and Bevel pulls data from that, then I get my temperature data. Personally, I think it's helpful, but it's not so helpful that I'm like heartbroken over not having it. I think it's just more about seeing your body temperature spikes to know if you're going to get sick or for ovulation type stuff if you're a female. But again, this just gives you a brief overview and like each one's a little graph. So you can see if there's like huge high spikes or low spikes in your data. And so you can jump in and just see how it's been trending over the last one month, three months, six months, one year. You can pick a day and a date range to see how those different metrics are changing. And then you can also get an AI summary and then again, chat with and talk about your health metrics with that AI summary. And that is so cool. And then below that, it does give you kind of a training load feature, which is similar to what Apple gives you. And so my cardio load, I have not been doing anything lately. And so I was strong for a little bit and I have just been detraining for a while. And so if I go for a run or exercise, it'll spike it back up. But again, it's helpful to see that information right there. And then, yeah, if you're a female, you can log cycle tracking and that will help with temperature sensor data if you have the Apple Watch. And then you can also modify the home. You can also do this in Garmin Connect too, to just rearrange the cards and see what's important to you or what's not, what's relevant, stuff like that. But that's just the home page. If we jump over here, I like to jump into the biology page over here. This is where it's going to give you information like your VO2 max, and it'll pull all this data in from years past and time past. And again, you can interface and chat with it so you can see how your trends are doing. And that's pretty awesome against all of it and so if you have a smart scale you can run your weight into the app and so that's just kind of like a measurement baseline of how your body is doing if we go into fitness this gives you more of a fitness dashboard breakdown i mean you can even you can log activities if you did something and it didn't track on your watch or you didn't do it with a watch um, but you can also just create your own custom workouts or you can generate certain templates with the AI built into the app to create your own workouts. And that's so, so cool. You can see your calendar over the last couple months to see how many activities you've been doing, like your heat map, your activity summary, breakdown by activity type, just over certain periods of time. Like I'm telling you, there's so much built into this app and I promise this is not sponsored. And I haven't been running a lot of strength workouts lately, but you would see all the data filled in there. And then on top of that, there's even the health journal section. This is the lifestyle piece that Garmin is trying to implement, but they're doing it in a way that's just so far behind this. And so this is where you can start logging all these different things. Like I had coffee super late. I got up early. I saw the sun this morning. I was on my phone late, blah, blah, blah. And so that's where you can see all of that. And then it will give you these insights about, okay, here's what's actually affecting your training or affecting your health. And the fact that it pulls those two things together so well is just awesome. And I love the fact that the journal entries are in there. I don't use them, but I love that it's there. And then you may have noticed this little plus button on the bottom. If we just hit the little plus button, this is where we can get into journaling food types. So if you really want to get into uh, logging different types of food, this is what you're eating. You could take a photo that way for nutritional purposes, it all logs it and keeps it in one place. You can also do uh, scanning different barcodes. You can search different type food types. 
You can view different templates for the library or just ask Bevel anything about your health. And so the fact that it pulls it all into one app is just so, so cool. And like I say, the challenge for all of this with switching back and forth between Garmin and Apple Watch is just data collection. And so having one source of truth being Apple Health, but then also Bevel as a great interpreter of that data is just super great. And so data sources, you can see Garmin Connect is finally a source integration, but then I also have it pulling from Apple Health as well. And so whether I wear my Apple Watch or my Garmin or even a smart ring, it's going to pull in information. But not every device is collecting the same amount of data. So some days have all of this, some days have none of it. It just depends on the device that you're wearing. And then on top of that, Bevel actually has great widgets. And if you're an Apple Watch user, all of this is available on the Apple Watch and the app actually gives you the ability to have different widgets on your watch so you can monitor your stress levels and stuff like that. So it really gives you a lot of similar metrics to what Garmin has. And so on the widget side of things, if we go in here and we find the Bevel widget, I mean, we there are so many. You can get different sizes for your overviews, your health monitor, dashboard, single metrics, stress throughout the day, energy banks, hydration, nutrition, calories and macros, macro goals, calories, macro balance, net energy, all of it. And so you have just visually an excellent way to capture your health information and your health data compared to what the Garmin gives you. And now I know it's not an apples to apples comparison because the way they're going to calculate like VO2 max, for example, or stress is going to be just different compared to Garmin just because they are different devices. But it is so similar that I don't think there's too much discrepancy to really get too worried about it. And so the reason why this is showing different, if we go to like today, for example, it's saying I'm at 55% energy. I was wearing my Apple watch all morning and then I switched over to the Garmin halfway through the day. And so that's where like this is going to pick up without skipping a beat and just pull in from Apple watch. And then it'll pull in from Garmin. I can switch devices and kind of get more of a health accurate health picture like that, as opposed to the Garmin is only going to give me the data from when I put it on. And so it's going to be similar. I mean, it's saying my body battery is at 49, my stress is at 54. And this is saying my stress is at 39, my body battery is at 55. So it's like, there's, it's within a certain margin of error, right? So it's not absolute truth, but it is pretty darn good for what it is. But yeah, those are the differences between Bevel and Garmin Connect. If you are a Garmin Connect user already and you want to access just a little more robust health-centric data about your Garmin, what it's collecting, Bevel's an excellent app. And then similarly, if you're an Apple Watch user and you want to get just a little more data around activities that what the Garmin would give, Bevel is an excellent app. It's just a great middle ground, and I recommend it pretty much to anybody that's using it. But let me know what you're using. Do you use one of these apps? Do you use Athletic? I know that's another one out there. It's excellent for more of the athletes, and it doesn't do as well in the health tracking sphere, but athletically, it's awesome. But let me know what you use. Do you have one app or another that is your favorite? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting, and I will see you in the next one.